I'm thrilled to be here to celebrate uh, Brassic tonight. We've got to start with you, Joe. It's your baby. Yeah. Where did you begin? How long had it been playing around in your head that you wanted to write something based on your experiences? Well, I was a bit, I've had a bit of a colourful past before. I, when I was young, I, I got a part on the telly. I was on Coronation Street. I was this little character on there for like three and a half years. And uh, came out of that, mum and dad split up all the normal shit that life has to throw at you. And I went off the bloody rails. I got up to all kinds of shit for many years. So I became like a bit of a career criminal, I guess you'd, you'd call it. And some of the jobs I did were just hysterical. Like you never come away with a fucking thing and it's not cool. It's like the way we portray it on TV and in film, it's, it's just not like that at all. Um, so I had a lot of stories and I'd always play with them and I'd embellish an awful lot. So slowly over time doing these different jobs, I would be embellishing these stories and the whole time I'd sort of gauge what worked from what didn't, you know. Um, and I got to the point where I could tell the story fluently and that I met David. David wanted something writing and I remember thinking, well, fuck, I'm dyslexic. I can barely write my own name. I mean, seriously, I have no idea how to spell Joseph. Joe is as far as I'll go. Like, um, and he went, write, uh, write something. So I wrote this hybrid. Jared's over there. That's my accountant who tells me to stop spending things. I want fucking trainers. I'm going to talk to you later on. Stay there. Um, so... What did I fucking say last? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you said David wanted you to write something. He wanted me to write, so I wrote a hybrid book. Yeah. It was a hybrid book. And uh, I sent it to David, he went, this is the ramblings of a fucking lunatic. There's like sellotape and post-it notes. And it was the, the ramblings of a lunatic. It, we needed this bugger here. So we sent him the hybrid book. He was like, actually, I kind of get it. It is mental, but I get it. I can see it, and this is good stuff. So that's kind of how it came to be. Dominic West also played a role. Expand. Smoked up a ton of my weed. And he, uh, I was like, listen, he said, uh, I can't pay you back now, obviously. Well, of course not. I've got to go off and shoot the wire and make millions. But um, he said, I will, be, I will be in your show if you make it. So he's fucked himself. That's like an A-list celebrity. And he's having to do our shitty little show. He's, he's tied in. He's tied in. He's, fuck, he's fucked it up for himself. <laughs> Posh people, man. Just because they speak like that doesn't necessarily mean they're clever, you know. Um, anyway, so that's him, folks. Chris Evans nearly got it this year, too. I saw your interview yeah. with him on the webcam, and he was like, I'll be in it, sure. Yeah, mad bastard. I mean, we could have done anything with him, you know. Like, anyway, we've, we thought better of it, poor Chris. We've left him out of it this time. So, David, when you first got this book, this is your first TV project, yeah. you're used to working in film. Yeah. What did you make of it? Did you just want to work with Dominic West? I mean, what was going on? Well, don't, so we made a film called Pride, which Dominic's mm. in and Joe's in. And yeah, so Joe, uh, well, so Dominic said you should, you should listen to his stories. He's got these like crazy stories. And they weren't crazy. Yeah, and it was all, you know, stealing a little pony and uh, a whole bundle of stuff. And we got, is it very echo, isn't it? Is it this? It is. Thing? It's yeah. the power of your voice. Though. Is it? I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> it's not called added. Gravitas. Uh, mm. Yeah, so I did just want to work with Dominic West, and he came along for the ride. Was one of the, uh... <laughs> he's so charming, dude. He's so charming. <laughs> no, he said he'd be Ooh. in it, and then you wrote down loads of stuff on uh, acres of wallpaper. I did, you? yeah. We wrote on every, we wrote on our bloody furniture and everything. Because I came back home to my mate Quail, and I was like, look, there's this whole thing, it's like this huge bipolar high of like, we're going to fuck it. I've met people. Dominic West said it was good. He owes me money because of the weed thing. And so we're going we're gonna to write it down. We're going to write it down, David. Dave's like, I'm a builder. I can't. I don't want to help. I was like, no, it's not a bipolar thing, Dave. This is real. This is real stuff. So I pulled all the garden furniture in, which is like, we live in this awful fucking house on this road. It's known as the Palace of Malice. Uh, it's called Pal Mal, but it's like, <laughs> dude, it's brutal down there. Like the shit. They go, leave it, Gary, leave it. You know, you can hear at night, just terrible shit kicking off outside. So we wrote on everything. We wrote on the walls, the tables. We run out of shit to write cardboard boxes. Like someone chucked a roll of fucking uh, 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 fucking wallpaper. <laughs> wrote all over that. Like uh, lost our deposit. You know, got a TV show out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Every cloud. You know. So, yeah. so Danny, how did you come on board? And was it a daunting task to try and translate all this into a? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went for what's known in the industry as a general meeting with uh, David Livingstone, <laughs> which usually just means you go and have a coffee and talk shit. 
Um, but basically, he, he, uh, David mentioned that Joe had these ideas for TV series based on his previous sort of, you know, experiences. And I've got to be honest, even though I was a fan of Joe from, you know, from Misfits and This Is England, a little bit of me thought, oh, God, an actor with ideas about, you know, <laughs> things from their past. Mm. But um, with <laughs> things from the past at the end. Things, things from, from their past. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we don't live too far away from each other. So no. like, we, we agreed to, so, so we met up in Manchester. So it was convenient. It was convenient. Yeah. Like a, um, like a bad relationship. Yeah. It's just like, oh, do you know what? I just don't want to go through it again. Let's just fucking live it out. What's <laughs> <laughs> our relationship? Let's just fucking keep going for the kids. <laughs> yeah. Like Posh and Bex. Sure. Apparently they're that way. Doing a lot of shagging sex. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> fucking hell, dude. Come on. I'd shag Beckham. I, 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 honestly, David. I think he's got better, hasn't he? Have you noticed he's got more better? He's in he? he? God, sucking <laughs> clean off. So here you are, the posh and backs of Thank comedy. Thank you. We are with the posh and yeah. backs of yeah. comedy. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. We, um, you know, if I can just get back on track. Sorry. We, um, <laughs> <laughs> we got, we, we got, we met for a nice dinner yeah. and we got on and I could see, I could see really clearly actually that the, the stories that Joe had and, and the ideas that he had for this show were, were, were brilliant and funny and you know, it was it was sort of in a tone that I'd written in a long time ago, and and I, I wanted to do again really. And I could see that there was definitely a show here that excited me, and I, and I you know I felt that we could collaborate really well. So so then we started this very very odd process of knocking ideas back and forth. So you leave me very 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 long WhatsApps, mm. like a podcast mm. basically. It is like fucking half an hour. Of um, Mm. You, you know, and we I mean, so we bat ideas, you know, around a lot. Well, it's because we? I can't write. I can't. I can't send him a, an email. I'm like, humble, like this. People go, oh, I'm just like the goodwill. Like, I'm like a chimpanzee. Like I can't do it. I can barely get on porn. Like I've been using my mind, guys. Do you remember back in the day you had to use your head? Like I've been doing that for years because I just don't know how to get on the fucking thing. So like I can't. I physically, I, I'm, I, academically, I'm just. I'm just not there, I can't, I can't do that. So w what I have got is bloody good ideas, I do. And uh, despite the fact I can't read or write, and you know what, from being a young kid, you, if you can't read and you can't write, from my generation, you're gonna fucking struggle in life, is what they tell you, you know? And you are made to feel bloody stupid. And for years I believed that, and only in the last sort of five or six years have I started to go, actually, no, you're not fucking stupid at all. Like, You've made some terrible decisions and continue to do so. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I just can't stop wanking. Like, um, can't stop, it's like, I'm out of control. I honestly think that my fucking hairline is terrified of my eyebrows. I'm in a stage in life, honestly, there's hair growing everywhere else. Do you know the last thing the publicist said? She went, don't fuck about on there, it's a serious thing, this. And this, I've just immediately fucked it up, haven't You've I? You've been yourself, which is awesome. Good. Yeah. What were you even? But, yeah. So I'd send yeah. these people. I'd send these. I'd send these no, long, no, these yeah. long voice notes, and and I, I know that sounds like the, the, the ramblings of a lunatic, which often it is. But the, I have. Uh, I do have good ideas, don't I, man? Tell the people. <laughs> <laughs> there were there were one or two good ideas in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Salvageable <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we do. I send Daniel. Go. Listen. So we'll talk on the phone. And he goes, like, we did this the other, literally the other night, didn't we? And we were discussing, we've got, we had a bit of a, um, oh, shit, nearly dropped. No, oh, yeah, you have to pick up. No, no. <laughs> 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 no. So when you get the script back, are you like, yeah, that's exactly what, what happened? Yeah, life? he's amazing. Dan's like, a f I mean, he's, he's a greyhound, man. He's so fast and it's always, like, really good. You know, it, what I'll do is I'll tell my version of the story and Danny structurally will set that up, you know. Um, and that, se that seems to be how it works, you know. He, he puts his own spin on it. What, we've, what we do from, from top to bottom is we hand it off. So I come up with some ideas with Dan, David, Alex Ganley, our other writer, and I send that off to them. That's their thing now. And we, we, we dip back and forth and so we're all on the same page. 
And then eventually that's handed off to the director and we let go of that completely. That's not our job anymore. We did our bit, you know. Um, and then the director lets go of the actors and the actors let go of the script to some degree as well. It's about letting go, hire the people that know what they're doing and have the intelligence to let them do their job. And that's what we do. And the amazing thing about Sky is uh, they've, they, they never... I mean, they just fucking never, they never have a note about anything. Like, it's like, John, are you sure we're not fucking all this up? I, I, think, John, I think John does have a few. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very no, good note. Not, very like, good it's note. not half as bad as I thought it was going to. I mean, honestly, like, we, we kind of left to our own devices and, and the results speak for themselves. I think, you know, you need to feel trust. Like, as an actor, you need to feel that trust to be able to to excel and be comfortable in the role. But I think also, you know, we've created a, we've created an environment where it's like hopefully, if there's a good idea, then people can feel free to mm. to throw it in and that will get in the show. Be that you know whoever has a good idea for for you know whatever we for whatever we're doing in the scene or empowering the the actors to say something funny on the day. Which mm. I mean, one of the, one of the most galling things for me personally as the writer is that. Frankly, I, I look at the episodes sometimes, and when they've had lived, it's funnier than anything I've written. And I'm like, okay, I'll get the credit because I wrote it. But that's, that's a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're really easy with it, though, man. Like, he's super chilled out about it. I've had days where I've, I've, I've worried and gone, everything's fucked on set, like, something will be wrong, you know, like, I'll give you an example. Oh, <laughs> go on, go on. What's a good example? The Antique fire dildo. The antique dildo, <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> Oh my God, dude, the dick came and it was wrong. I spent, dude, how many conversations do we have about that dick? I was like, oh, it, it needs to be. This, is, this was the dick I wanted, right? It had to be, like, the, like so it, could, it was an antique dildo, but it could have been something else. Like, maybe, like, if, if a group of five people, maybe one or two people went, looks a bit like a dick, that. And, and then the rest of you go, don't be fucking stupid, it's not a dick, idiot. Looks old, it's an old thing. You know, so what came was this like unbelievable dick, like really obviously a dick. And it went, this is how it bent. Honestly, honestly what dick is this shape? It went over yeah. like that. <laughs> and like that. I went, who's going to get that? So like this. I was like, no one is getting that anywhere. Right? No one's getting that anywhere. That was never a usable thing. That was ornamental, if anything. It had to be rubber. It had to be rubber and the dog had to fucking grab the dick and there was like this whole like... Uh, you've seen the show, haven't you? you know? Tug of war with a, 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 a dog. Nightmare, and... Yeah, I mean, the, the whole, I mean, for the, 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 I don't quite know how we got onto, onto antique dildos. Well, it happened the, sooner than I thought. The, really. yeah. <laughs> the worst moment in the filming of series one was trying to get a dog to do a tug of war with an antique dildo. <laughs> Which, I mean, dogs are supposed to like do tug of war with sticks and stuff like that. So you'd think it'd be a simple thing, but I'm I mean, still angry see, about it. Was it. We had to reshoot, we had to get a different dog and, and a different dildo no, and reshoot. No. I mean, it was just. And the whole not thing. only that, not only that, we had to CGI on the dildo because it didn't look old enough. So we aged the I dildo. I fucking said that as well. I went, this is a brand new dick. And the one we had before had chips and stuff like that on it. I fucking said this had happened. Well, it's because I look like a Don't worry what I do. No one listens. I'm like, that dick's, that dick's not the same. That's not the same dick. And I was like, it's the same dick. What's the matter with you? Like, I know it's not the same dick. And that fucking dog, the first dog, that, this is the kind of stuff that happens, right? So the first dog that comes is a chocolate lab. And the first thing it does is they're like, this is the chocolate lab you'll be working with. And it did this. <laughs> what the fuck was that little thing it just did there? Like, what, what was that moment it had a fucking tick, dude? So that's what chocolate labs are like. They're mental, aren't they? I thought, well, we're on a time scale. And we can, cannot be working with a sociopath. What's wrong with it? Anyway, I said, so what we need it to do, we need, have you read the script? I've read the script. I said, so what, what we need it to do is need to lock onto the bell end and we've got to like, get a bit of a tug of war situation where it won't give it back. Oh, it won't do that, love. I went, why not? They went, well, chocolate labs have really soft gum lines and it's going to hurt it. And this dog, the, dude, this dick was like rock hard. So that, I mean, that, they brought the wrong, if you went to McDonald's and you said, honestly, you went, can I have a Big Mac, please? And then you drove through and they gave you a fucking Happy Meal. What would you do? You'd drive back around. You know, you're giving me a fucking Happy Meal, I wanted a Big Mac. I got a fucking Happy Meal that day and I still haven't lived it down. 
I can feel the veins in my neck, dude. <laughs> Should we the move thing on? Is, yeah, it's shift it's on. A a it's a problem you won't have on any other show that you work on, so oh, yeah, special. Mm. Um, Made myself sweaty with that story. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to look at some clips throughout the evening. This is from episode one. It's the opening car chase, and it just kind of sets the tone for the show, I think. So right. We can have a look. <laughs> So that's brilliant because it, it says what it needs to say straight off the bat, doesn't it? I mean, did you, how quickly did, did you come up with that as an opener? Well, well it, wasn't in the original, it wasn't in the original script. Um, but I think we sort of, we, we sort of we all... We stole it. I stole that idea from a, a, a documentary <laughs> called Meet the Johnsons. I, fucking... I have no idea what he's yeah, saying. Yeah, you got. Well, I told you to watch it. You stories. fucking didn't. That's why. <laughs> Never watches nothing. I tell him to watch. <laughs> Constantly forwarding in porn. <laughs> but it, it does, doesn't it? Carry on with what you were saying. I'm, 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 what, tell him. What, what was the documentary? No, it's a really good book. documentary. <laughs> Honestly, no, you should. What, it's called Meet the Johnsons on YouTube, and it went under the bloody radar. And there's amazing footage of them careering round in stolen cars. And I was like, I'm fucking having that. So, yeah, I've stolen it. But it's important what is said there, i.e., you know, it's not, it's not a look at working class life that's bleak and depressing mm. and all about aspiration and desperation. It's mm. so different to that, isn't it? And that's what you wanted so to So I think create. what we... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's the only episode that's got a great big long... I mean, it got a little bit of voiceover in the rest of the episodes, but a tiny little bit, you know. But I think we wanted to sort of just do a kind of declaration. I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a piss take on the train spotting thing, but we wanted to just sort of declare... <laughs> All the things that the lads were kind of against and set our stall out really quickly. And it actually, it, you know, to, to write, it wrote very quick. You know, mm. it, was, it was something we came up with incredibly swiftly. And it stuck and we didn't really change it very much. I think we trimmed it down a little bit. I think it was a little bit longer to begin with. About a few more things that, you know, golf on a Sunday and all this kind of stuff. But I can't remember what's in there now. Mm. But yeah, I mean, and, and you know, we, we liked it and we just sort of felt it kind of hit the ground running, you know. And for you, Joe, how important is it to represent where you, where you grew up, the people that you know, in that kind of way? Mm, it's really important. I feel like, I've, I, you know, the working classes, anything, anything, uh, any working class show that represents the working class is fucking miserable. And some of the happiest people I know are working class. Some of the smartest lads I know are working class. Like, they've clawed the way out using the... What I don't have, like I don't, don't have them, them. I don't have them, the academic side. So I mean, like one of my friends, Thomas Morey, like it's a rough place, some like parts of Chorley, and like you've got to, you've got. To, I mean, unless you've got a burning ambition to work in B and Q, you better fucking get out of there, <laughs> you know. And so my my opinion on it was, I'm just sick to death of us being depicted as these like. Long suffering. I mean, sure, there's a bit of suffering goes on, and, and often it is hand to mouth. But that's not to say we're all fucking miserable. Like, you know, that's a middle class view of what it is to be working class. You know, and, and that's really fucking hard to keep. You know what? And also, whenever you've seen gang sort of shows with gangs of lads or girls, it's in the fucking city. It's up here in London. You know, like. There's these small towns all over the UK, like ex-milling towns, and yeah, they, they, they're underserved. I thought that that's an underserved audience, and microcosms that create these incredible characters that are absolutely worth talking about. And so there was a gap in the market, and we fucking filled it. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. And what has the reaction been like back home? It's amazing, yeah. I mean, I... I'm now living in Manchester. I, I genuinely was living in a, a fucked up house in the woods, like cold showers and pooing in, in the outback there, <laughs> next to the brambles. Uh, and uh, since the series, since filming series two, uh, I've stayed in in this fucking oh, dude. My flat's unbelievable. Like. It's, it's great, so I know someone didn't want to leave it. But we've, we're, we're working on other things, you know, there's the edit, of course, and so I'm sticking around for that. Normally, I'd have, I'd have gone off, I was doing a job in America for a while, so I would have been out there by now. But that got canned. 
So I'm back on my ass again. <laughs> These characters, are they people that you know? Yeah, are they yeah, composites yeah, of people? Yeah. They're composites of people and some of them are genuine people. I know some of them are very close friends to me. Um, in fact, Ashley, the, the, the character Ashley, Ashley named the show Barassi. Because I'm sat at my, my initial, I wanted it to be Tinkers and Tails. Because it's about fucking travellers, a lot of it. And, and uh, initially, this was like very early on um, when I was writing on Garden Furniture. And then when it came to choosing a name, it has to be quick. It, ideally, you need a one Barass Ick. It gives it as a ring to it. So I'm in the car and we were going, I think we were going boxing. Uh, yeah, because Ashley was sick that day. He worked too hard and he threw up. He had to run out and throw up. Anyway, so on the, on the way to boxing, he. Um, I'm fucking struggling, man, for a name, and we kind of need one now. It's getting to a point where me and Dave haven't put anything forward, and we're supposed to be good at this shit, and we've got to prove ourselves. I mean, we're a couple of cunts, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and Ashley really flippantly went, Brassic. <laughs> I was like, that's brilliant. That's just such a good idea, Ashley. It just doesn't give a shit. Like, these are the people, I mean, you know, that's what these, that, men like Ashley and the Tom O's of this world, they really do shape you and... and I'm the man I am today as a result of being around them. You know, you become a product, product of your environment. And so these people are real, and them jobs, some of them jobs, a version, <laughs> a version of them really happen. Some slightly more severe than others. Season two is, we can't talk about, so I'll watch. It's <laughs> very good. T I'm trying go. not to smoke this, but I, fuck off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to look at another clip, so this is your moment. Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> So, David, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that clip is the perfect illustration. This is what Brassic does. Big subject matter, funny, though. I mean, how easy is it to, to marry those things together? And how important is that tone to, to making Brassic work? Well, it's more him than me, but... Uh, I was then. worried about it, actually, to be honest with you, because I thought yeah. we are, we are, we're so broad sometimes, and we're so sensitive at other times. You're thinking... God, is when you get that on the screen, is that going to be okay? Like, you know, stealing a little pony and, you know, <laughs> dicks, antique dicks. And, you know, like, is that going to work? Are you going to be able to take that out there and those two things going to merge together? Because it isn't, you know, it isn't something that you see every day. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, uh, it's not got that sort of, um, it's not just, the, it's not the norm. Is it? I mean, I don't think this show is, like, particularly ordinary. It's, it's, it's like something that completely stands out. So... Yeah, we were, I, I was quite worried, but then when we saw the first episode, you know, reading it, it reads as one thing, but then you go, is this really going to work when you see it on the screen? But it did, and you just knew it did. Like, you know, the first, well, maybe not the first edit, maybe the second <laughs> edit or the third edit. But you're like, this is actually really holding together. And if it can make you cry and roar with laughter, then that's pretty good. It's a pretty good spot to be in, but... I down think to these guys. That does ground it as well. That, the, the, the tears, the sadness, you, you have to have that. You, it, it grounds the madness of the show. You know, there's little rules you have to follow. So, so for example, some of the characters are just sort of on the very edge of becoming a caricature. They're just on the edge of it, and that's where we like to keep them. But if you put two of them together, there's nothing to ground that moment. So you've got to be careful. There are little rules we have to follow, and... And those sad moments, we were nervous of at first, actually, because it's, you know, comedy drama, and we, don't want to, we didn't want to make it too heavy. But actually, off the back of season one, a lot of the positive feedback came off the back of the really the poignant moments, which was, which was really nice to hear, you know, because that was a big worry at times, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> you know... Say it a little bit longer. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, obviously one of the things that, one of the big things we've done with certainly series one, but continuing into series two that we can't talk about. No spoilers. Um, is, is Vinny, Vinny's bipolar. Now, Joe's been very public about his, his own bipolar. And, and I think it, we, we, were, we were quite worried at first about dealing with that in a sort of co comic environment. But in the end, you know, you said it, it was, it's like as long as we're truthful about it, mm. we can be as funny, funny as we like. You know, and, and there are moments that are quite heavy to do with it, but, but the scenes where he goes to see uh, Dr. Chris, Dominic West, are, are just ridiculous. Mm. I mean, they are, you know, Chris, Chris is a, a self-obsessed narcissist who just doesn't give a shit, really. Uh, he kind of does give a shit about Vinny, but he's, he's sort of so wrapped up in his own struggles. things that it's, that it's kind of comic, you know. But I, I think 
within those scenes, what we're doing actually is having our cake and eating it and going, we're, we're dealing with bipolar because everything Vinny's saying is truthful, but Chris is so kind of self-absorbed that you get the comedy out of it as well. It's almost a bit of a, co a comment on how uh, we treat mental health or how we have treated it. It's getting a little bit better. The tide's starting to change now. But, you know, we've, when it comes to, for, I'll give you an example, medication, it's fucking trial and error. They've put me on all kinds of shit. And it's not always good. Like, there'll be people in the audience right now that understand what I'm talking about. There's a bedding in process. And if you're put on the wrong drug, that is, and you've already got mental health issues. Jesus Christ. I mean, so it's almost the negligence of Chris is almost a little bit of a comment on the system we work under and how we sort of, we put everybody under these umbrellas, but one person's problems are always very different to the next. And, and that's the trouble with mental health. You know, you don't, you, you just can't see it. You can't, I mean, I've got serious mental health problems. You know, I have, I have these fucking meltdowns, like the shit you see on the TV, like I have that. I go, I'll get very frustrated and angry. And you know, the thing is with bipolar is a lot of people feel like uh, when I go on a down, it's like, oh, war me and I'm in tears. I'm pissed off. I'm fucking can't control how I feel. Like, it doesn't matter that you've got a nice flat and you're hanging Ivy's doing well. <laughs> well but you are so open. <laughs> you are so open, but this is incredibly personal. Whenever you, yeah. When you film some of these scenes, did you think, oh, Jesus. Oh, it's oh. really close to the bone. I don't get to go home. I don't finish a fucking day yeah. at work and go home and everything goes away. Yeah. Like, I am bipolar. That's me. The medicine yeah. Vinny's on, I'm on. That, that genuinely is me, the shit yeah. Vinny did. That's the man I would have become if it wasn't for acting, you know? And so it's very, very personal to me. The lines are incredibly blurred, and I'm, I'm very, very passionate about the project, you know? Um, particularly the mental health side of things. And of course, my father's in there as well, who's, a, who's been a big influence on my life and shaped me and carved me into the man that I am today. So it is all very, very personal, and it, it, I understand that it makes me We've spoke about this a lot, like, I'm safe. As long as I've got the family, I'm safe. Like, I, I love my friends, I, I really do. I tell them all the time. Like, I'm, I'm terribly lucky to know Danny and to know David. I mean, they look like cunts. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, to see them now, I know it's hard to believe. Like, you know, not even made the effort. Uh, about? You said to me, do you know what, I fucking belled him as well. Before I went, what kind of an outfit do you wear for this kind of shit? I'm just going as I normally do. I, it was too late, I'd already bought something. From what, what, these joggers? What, piss stained joggers? No, 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 no. <laughs> I fucked it off last minute because I, I thought, no, I'm going to look like a twat. I'll, you'll look like the actor, Joseph, and, uh, and they'll look like industry people. <laughs> So last minute, I thought, go as a trendy car thief. <laughs> <laughs> I took my grill out. I've, I've even took my grill out for you. I have a fucking grill here. <laughs> Cost me a fucking grand. Check I'm showing out. you. Check these this out. This is a grand. Nobody will be able to see this at the back. Yeah. No one fucks you with these in, I tell you. Because <laughs> uh, the first thing you think is, that cunt don't care about his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he will fucking, he's going to roll about. I have it all the time when I meet like fans and things like that. There's this moment where they want to piss about with me a little bit, and then they think, actually, he might fucking lever me, and they're right, they're right. Honestly, I would, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at another clip. <laughs> <laughs> It's a beautiful illustration of what we're talking about, of how poignant it can be. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk a bit about Erin, because she's a fantastic character, and Michelle plays her brilliantly. How important was it to have her in there in the mix amongst those lads and not make it all lads, lads, lads? Do you want to do it? Yeah, I mean, very, very important. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think I've, uh, I've talked about this a, a bit when we were doing press for, for Brassic One. In, in, for me, she kind of... When I was, when I was thinking about Erin and when we were talking about Erin, I was thinking a little bit about the sort of the way that I had tried to use education as a springboard to get out of the town that I came from. And so I suppose I put some of that journey into her, really, this desire to sort of do something to, to, to better yourself. So even though she, she's sort of, she's been forced into the role of the sensible one, which I know is, you know, is a, is a little bit kind of disappointing for our lead female character. But I think, you know, 
she's she's not actually she's incredible she, she she's a sort of wild child who's, who's just made this decision that she wants to leave and um and i you know and i think michelle really sort of took that on board and and, and ran with it and then as we sort of go into the second series that i'm not really going to say that much about um <laughs> You know what? What we've done with her is we've taken her to somewhere, somewhere that's just shifted on again, that that sort of tells you something else about her. You know, and and I, you know, she is she. You know, along with 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 Vinny, she is this. They are the heart of the show. You know, they are. It's this this. You've got this this dynamic going on there with with Vinny and Dylan and and Erin that is you know is central to the sort of show really. And it is, it's a fantastic ensemble. How easy or difficult was it to find that cast and for it all to, to work together? Uh, well, it was, I mean, it's fucking it's easy. Well, no, it's, but it's, like, it's easy when you find the right person. It's yeah, really well, yeah, you was, but the, you, I always thought that it'd be like, you know, that guy who'd come through, that girl who'd come through, they'd be like, him. We only had one of them. Yeah, we, we did have one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but that's okay. It just, you know, it just takes, it just takes a while. And you're yeah. building a band. And, you know, Joe knows, because these are kind of like, in a way, they're the parts of friends of his, you know. So it's kind of trying to fit something that's already in Joe's head. But, you know, we're trying to build this sort of variety of where you kind of go, OK, this is this character, this is that character. Mm. And different people just give different portrayals. But you kind of know pretty much, don't you, when, you, when it lands. Yeah, you do, yeah. Well, I mean, we, there's a bloody filtration process where you whittle them down a little bit. You have to. You, you, but... We, we are, I've got to say, like, we have, oh, fuck, it's just so boring because everybody always does this, but we do have an amazing cast and crew and the environment, we're the envy of the fucking crews of the North. We have the best time and we work fucking hard. There's no easy days, there's no easy weeks. We barely get through our schedule. It's barely achievable. And every single one of them people involved love coming to work. And the cast we have... I'm just so grateful to them. Like, and they've really, the season that we're not allowed to talk about, season two, <laughs> they've really found their own. Like, there's no one you have to worry about. You just let them off the lead. They're all good dogs. They go and have the pisses. They don't wander too far off the scripts. They always come back when you ask them to. They're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. Incredibly talented and bloody gorgeous. Being around Michelle is like seeing a car crash every day. You drive past and you just think, I'm going to have to have a look, and that's it now, day ruined. <laughs> like, that's what it's like. Being around Damien Malone is the same. Have you ever seen Symmetry like it? And he is <laughs> built like a brick shit house. You want to see him? He took his top off. He's like Ned Flanders. <laughs> just, just torn up this lovely, lovely Irish guy. Just I, Honestly, I'd turn for him. I'd turn for him. <laughs> Path, Path, who plays JJ, looks like a fucking movie star. He's grown a beard in. He does not look like a mechanic. I'm not happy with this. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to grow a beard for him. He's too gorgeous. And how does it make you feel, Joe? It started as this kind of messy kind of thing in your head of all your experiences. Now it's this polished thing that everyone loves. It's one of Sky's biggest comedies. How does it make you feel to watch I'm not it? surprised by it. I, 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 I knew my idea was a good one. I, I knew that it was worth hearing. Like, I, I, you know, I'm for, whether that, I don't know whether that makes me a twat or not. I just did. <laughs> you know, I believed it would go on the TV. I'd say to them all the time, this will happen. I've got other ideas. They will happen. Like, absolutely they will. I believe in myself. For the first time in a lifetime, I know my own worth. Uh, and I, I'm not dumb. Like, I want more. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's the truth. You sound like an American. I've spent <laughs> enough time out there. I'll tell you now, darling. Uh, um, for you, David, what is it about this series that has worked so incredibly well? Well, it's nice to do it with people you like. And, uh, and I include Sky in that very much. Like, it's... Uh, it's oh, look at that, we all put our glasses on. Yeah, I see that, synchronicity. That <laughs> would have been some again. sort of psychology. Let's all pick them back up. Um, no, no, get erections. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's nice to do something like, you know, like, I've, my, too far, yeah. mainly what I've done is, is films, and it's, it's incredibly painful process most of the time, like, there's so many people all chipping in with one thing or another, and this has been, like, you know, sometimes the three of us have argued about things, music we argue mm. about, 
you know, like certain scenes, but it's always coming from exactly the right place. And we always find like a good resolution. Mm. It has been great with Sky as well. You know, like it's it's felt like a friendly environment in which to do it. So I, I would say very proud of what's come out at the at the end, but really enjoyed the process. And it's mm. like it's a bunch of you know, like we chat a lot and like we do, yeah. you know, weekends and stuff, and it's nothing to do with the show. You know, like. The confetti we story, dude. I'm not kidding. He told me this. Like, we, we fucking howl on the phone, all of us together, laughing. Just, like, you'll it'll start off a work chat and descend into oh, fucking hell. I can't do it because there's not enough time. <laughs> he told me a story about his posh friend pouring accidentally fucking <laughs> pouring confetti all over his. He went out. Let's quickly do it. He went for a posh <laughs> meal. He's like, no, there's no time. Listen. So he went out. He went out for a posh meal. I'm going to ruin it by rushing it. He went out for a posh meal. And he said, he goes, we sat there, it's quite expensive. And I'm thinking, I fucking must have spent a fucking fortune. It's a lot of money. He said, his plate comes, it's his main, it's his main course. And he picks up a little jar of what he thinks has come with the meal. He's just fucking tipped a lot of confetti over all his food. <laughs> I just fucking love that, what an idiot. <laughs> just brilliant, isn't it? Again, just because you have the fucking posh voice does not necessarily mean you have any common sense of any kind. Why was, the, why was the confetti there? It wasn't confetti, it was like, potpourri. Potpourri! <laughs> it's even better! It's even better, wrong. He was oh, holding the thing and he just, anyway, I, he, poor guy. He's my lawyer, by the way, he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> he just, like, very posh, expensive, and he just poured it all over the top. And I, went, I, just love I don't that, think man. that's food. <laughs> and, like, so he had a little mouthful. And, no, I don't think it is food. And it must have been, like, honestly, criminally expensive, oh, like God. 50 quid starter. It was picking these bits out of this, like, <laughs> Just kidding. That's me, that man. That's my jam, do. dude. I love it when someone fucks up like that. It's like, it's only on a small level, but it's just enough to really entertain your mates. <laughs> you know. Brilliant. Well, it's now time for your questions. So if you have Shit. a question, there are roving mics. Raise your hand nice and high so that I can see you. And we will go to you. There's a lady. One here. fucking person <laughs> as a question. Started. It's a start. It's a start. really long. <laughs> Three parter. Hello. Hello. Hiya. Um, you've talked a bit about the character of Dominic West, mm. but is he entirely fictional or is he slightly based on no, someone? Well, no, it's, it's, it's coincided that I have had a lot of negligent doctors. It's not because they're negligent, it's because the system they work under is, is, is fucking wrong. It's, it's, it fails a lot of people. So it has accidentally become a bit of a comment on the journey of, you know, I mean, for fuck's sake, I, I had no idea I was bipolar. To, to, I, I think when I did Misfits, the, the producer of that was like, you are mental, dude. Like, <laughs> you really, you f it feels like you're dangerous. That's how bad it is. So they sent me for the first time that I went to Harley Street and there was this man in this room in this big, it was one of those uh, doctor surgeries where there's a fucking couch just for ornamental purposes. No one's ever sat on that. That just fills an area, you know? And he dictated this note to my GP and it was just this fucking bollocking this tirade of how the fuck haven't you spotted this and why is he on I'm looking at his medical history and the drugs you're putting him on are brutal like I mean honest to god I've, I've been through uh, the the most recent uh, uh, physical uh, I lost the vision in me in my left eye it's still bad it's, so your eye uses fluids to process light we're all using them right now it works really hard and if you produce too much cortisone, it'll stop the fluid draining out your eyes. So what essentially happens is it becomes a blister which drains and so my iris is sort of fucking broken on itself. So on top of everything else, I've gone fucking blind. I went blind overnight. You know, I woke up the next day and it was gone. I've lost my hair from the stress and, you know, the fucking symptoms you won't even believe. Oh, honest to God. Well, I was di diagnosed when I was 33, so. Right, yeah, it's fucked, dude. Big love. Big love, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. It's a lady here. Oh, the mic's just coming. Hi. Um, I was just wondering how difficult it was to sell to Sky and if, if you shopped it around to other platforms or networks. Oh, yeah, for sure. so, so I had no idea. So I think naivety is like a huge asset. And we were like, apart from him, we were completely naive. Yeah, we were. And like, we were like, oh, yeah, no, it'll be all right. We'll just go to a TV channel and we'll just sell it to them. <laughs> Anyway, we found out, like, not that long ago, that Sky get, is it 80 pitches a week? 
something like this, 40 pitches a week. <laughs> and we would never have gone through the door had I let that information. I mean, there was no chance. I was amazed we got a meeting. Uh, well, I wasn't at the time. I just thought, well, that's what's going to happen. You'll just write a script, and then you'll just go and see somebody, and then they'll just make it. And that's the way it worked, having no idea, because I'd never done it before. Uh, but also thinking Joe was quite electric, and Danny was quite well known. And I thought, right, this is, you know, this will, this will probably happen. But I can't believe it. Honestly, we took it to John. And uh, really quickly, he went, yeah, no, I think it's really, really good. I'll have it. And actually, it wasn't until he said that I suddenly started to panic. Like, yeah. oh, shit, now we've actually got to make something halfway decent. But it wasn't difficult. It was correct. It's not usually like it that. It was kind of like, <laughs> it was like, how much do you want? I go, oh, come fuck, like, are you fucking stupid? Like, don't give us all this money. Like, <laughs> like test the waters. Anyway, they did, they did. They just let us go, man. Um, and honestly, it's not, a, oh, fuck. We all do, I mean, we do it all the time. The cast's amazing, we're this fucking family. We really are. And, and them fuckers down there, <laughs> I, I honestly could not dream of being under a better channel, like, uh, we, we've just been so unbelievably lucky. Like, uh, do you remember what I said to Zai? I went, have you read the script? He went, nah, I couldn't be asked." <laughs> <laughs> uh, just brilliant, straight away. And I always thought, I always thought these, these men are probably gonna be sociopaths, you know, like, they're running this massive conglomerate and, uh, you know, I mean, feelings can't come into it, but they're fucking hysterically funny. They're really nice guys. We went, we went to this festival. It's like an industry festival. It's full of cunts. <laughs> and, um, you know, posh twats ever eating lobster. We all got fucking <laughs> abbed. Me, me, Danny and John got plastered. John went for a pee at one point, and it took him like three hours to come back. Like, what the fuck? Is he having a poo? What's happening? Um, and he'd, he'd had like 20 ideas pitched to him. Why aren't you getting back to me cold? So the fact that we, the fact that we got in that room with him at all, I had no idea. We were completely naive to it all. And we were just the luckiest bunch of twats on earth to have them, you know. They've been, they've been really good to us. That's a long answer. Another question? This gentleman here. Mike, please. Hi. Um, from the process of, from the crazy looking book to the script, how much was cut out as well as how much was changed and added for it to fit the narrative? I don't know really, really. Well, I mean, you know, I think, I think from, from the starting point, mm. there, was, there, was so, there was so much good stuff that, you know, that were, from, that were from Joe's life and great funny ideas and this kind of thing, you know. but. I suppose what uh, what you've got to do is shape it, right? Mm. You know, so so what we had to do was you know take all that all that sort of great source material and turn it into you know a series. So it's very hard to remember now because we've been through mm. so many drafts and so many conversations and you know to, to to know exactly what was there. But I think you know I think th there is no doubt about it that 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 starting point was such a strong starting point that it just gave us that thrust into, into a TV series. But then what happens, like any TV series, is you, you talk so much mm. and we come up with new ideas and embellish things and, you know, that it's, it just becomes something, it becomes its own new thing as you go down the road, you know. Mm. And then series two again, oh, then you, then you, <laughs> you know, then you start. You it's scared, like you I, genuinely I, I scared me ball of I, It's like handing over a big tangled ball of wool. My head doesn't work in a linear way at all. So, I have the ideas, but I can't put them, I can't get them together, man. Like, I, I'd love to, sh to write something non-linear um, so that we don't have to f fuck about. <laughs> fucking months of pissing around. But, um, yeah, a lot of it is, you know, when we, when we storyline uh, for different episodes, Dan's often the quiet one, because ultimately what's going to have to happen is he's going to have to untangle that bit and then fuck me there's another bit here and then Jesus if I let you know and so it's this it's this constant process of trying to pull it back together I'm not great with with that <laughs> you know but it doesn't come in one lump either so you just all. like <laughs> there's this sort of you know book or wallpaper or whatever you want to call it and then you'll get this call I remember this one at like three o'clock in the morning like on my just a whatsapp thing saying do you know that guy from the really wild show Terry Nutkins he got bitten by the same otter twice. He did. I think we should put it in the show. 
And that yeah. was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he but did. Get loads of he bits he, he fucking it. did. Listen to this. Te- honestly, te- fucking Terry Nutkins. Do we all know Terry Nutkins? <laughs> right, you're lost there. He had, Nobody he had, knows Terry Nutkins. Right, Terry Nutkins, let me tell you about this guy. <laughs> He had a horseshoe haircut. You know, the, the guys who've gone bald and just won't let it go. And he ran this, he was in a, th- a show called The Really Wild Show. Great show. Go on, it's sick, dude. Yeah. Anyway, his hair, he'd let it go to the air, this mad bastard. Like, no one in his family's gone, Terry, what the fuck's going on? What's going on? Like, get rid of it. If he was part of my family, someone would have fucked him up for that. Like, anyway, so. When he's young, he's getting he's into animals. He goes to this there's this no, um, no. there's this day trip with school, and he fakes his age to go on this day trip. And he goes to, go around seeing these different animals. They go to the otter enclosure, and one of the cunts bites his bloody <laughs> finger off. Now listen to this. So now he's of age. It's the year after, and he's of age, and he thinks, Do you know what? Fuck it, I'm going back. Goes back the same fucking otter bit another finger off. <laughs> it's a true story. It's just brilliant, isn't it? Imagine losing two fingers to the same otter on two separate occasions. I mean, that is gold, man. I just, it's, and it's them moments. It's them like, like with me, me grandma's friend. I was just telling John earlier on, one of me grandma's friends, she says to me, you must come and see this new cat I've got. My grandma's like, fuck it, it's a fucking cat. You know what I mean? They all look the same. It's like when someone shows you a picture of the kids. Unless it's got a horn growing out of it, so I don't want to see it. They all look the same. Like, yeah, amazing. <laughs> so my grandma's gone to this woman's... She's crazy, this woman. There'll be no names mentioned. And uh, she said, so where'd you get it then? She went, it's really sad, really. It was just, it was just sitting on someone's step. <laughs> <laughs> she went, what, just, just sitting there? Just, just sitting there. Just sitting there in the sun. <laughs> She's fucking nicked a woman's <laughs> cat. Like, that's gone. You know, and, and it, it's these things, so these moments and these characters, I digest it and I'll hold on to that. And so what I'll do is I'm doing what I'm doing now. I practice it. I practice the story on people and I watch for what hits from what doesn't hit and the shit that hits I take to Dan, you know? Or I'll practice it on Dan, like... <laughs> he gets so fucking fed up, dude. <laughs> I've got this other idea, dude. That, so once Brassic's like... Once these two fuckers just canned us and we've just been sent out of the <laughs> um, I've got an, another idea, which is just... A nightmare, like, it's a nightmare, dude. I keep plugging it to him and he just, go, well, just do brassic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's awful, dude. <laughs> We've got another question on brassic. I'm going to take one from the back, that lady there. Ooh, there's loads of people with their hands up. Mm. Um, what was the hardest um, scenes to film, like the more funny ones or the more emotional ones? The funny ones are easy, you know. The sad ones, it, the, there is an, you know, I, I always joke about this, that I don't have to dig deep, but absolutely I do, yeah. And it, it's very close to the bone, you know. Um, I do, I do genuinely, I mean, it's hard to believe. I'm having a bipolar high now. I, mine, I'm stage one, so, like, this is very stimulating for me. It's not like this all the time. You know, I'll go back to the hotel room later on and it'll go back to being fucking miserable, you know. And that's the truth of it. That's the nature of bipolar. And so, yeah, dude, like some of it's really fucking tough. Like it is, but it's worth it. It's, I, I, it's worth the sacrifice. Um, I think that there's, we need to raise awareness in mental health. Absolutely we do, particularly with men. Like we really struggle to talk about it. Um, a lot of us want to and uh, we're just not sure how, you know. If you've never done it before, you wouldn't ask a guy who's never ran upstairs to just fucking go for it, would you? Um, it's difficult. And so like, yeah, the lines, like I said earlier, they do get very blurred, for, particularly for myself. I do, it's worth it. It's fucking worth it, you know? Definitely it is. That was a bit American too, wasn't it? Awesome. No, it's all right. That's a lovely I tried to pull it back, made it more British towards <laughs> yeah. the end. Is there a question? Saw, saw a hand over here on it, yes, sir. Um, the mic's just come in. Oh, there's one there, there for is. you. Uncle Keith. Thanks, Alex. It's a question for Joe. We're working on a couple of projects where uh, the the principal character is based on truth, and there's a lot of inputs to to come in from that person, and we're having a lot of fun with those. Did you find, in terms of the creative payback, did you enjoy the input that you gave, or seeing it made? What was what was the? It's just been the. I'm really glad you asked the question. It's been 
an unbelievable journey from, from going... Because like Danny said, actors with ideas, it is dangerous. And you know that as an actor. You, we know the way writers think. We know the way producers think. We're not all complete fucking idiots. Like, so the, the, the whole process has been honestly life-changing. Like, the way I perceive myself even. Like, I'm still struggling. I'm still unexperienced. I, have to, I need... The team, I need them. I'm constantly going to them for advice. I never really know what to do. I've realised that a big chunk of it is just pretending you have an answer. <laughs> You're winging it, all of us. I said to David once, I went, they're going to work me out, man. I'm telling you they're going to work me out. They're going to fucking work me out one day too. You know, honestly, everyone's the fucking same. We're all shitting ourselves. So, <laughs> you know, it's. I, I think... See. The, the, the process of getting it there, you almost work blindly. It's like, I was like a zealot. I had to, had to do it. Um, I do get very uh, uh, st stubborn about my, my ideas and the things I want to do and achieve. And I had to do it. And then, you know, you sort of do this, five years goes by in this fucking blur, writing on garden furniture and hybrid books and fucking wallpaper. And then suddenly there's, there's David and then there's Danny. And it's all, it's all exciting as it's happening, but it does go by in a blur. And then before you know it, it's on the fucking TV and it's massive. The night it came out, I didn't watch it. I didn't have a, any, uh, I don't have a TV license. <laughs> so <laughs> I just sat in my fucking, I just sat in the, um, in my front room looking at stuff, terrified, absolutely terrified. You know, if it, if it hadn't have been a success, my life would have been fucking boring. I'd have let, I'd have let John down, who, who has given me and our show everything, everything we owe to that cunt down there. Like, we really, really do. Don't and that's a, lot, that's a lot of pressure to not let a man like that down who's given you so much. Who believed you for the first time in 35 years, someone went, you're clever and I want to do that thing that you've, that idea you've come up with. That was a fucking massive deal. Like, so yeah, I, it was a blind process, and then by the time it's on the TV, I mean, it's just, it, honestly, it's, it's, it is, it's difficult to put into words. It's been a life-changing thing, definitely, it has, yeah. yeah. Time for a couple more questions, yes. Hi. Um, if Sky were to commission, like, let's say, seven seasons, would you guys go for it, or like you have a clear vision of going, it's he just He wouldn't be this. happy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. We have made it clear to them no more than nine. We've said <laughs> <laughs> We won't even round it off to ten. <laughs> God, nine and a bit. <laughs> Three eps on the last one. Christmas God. special. Christmas special. That's quit out. <laughs> I mean, as long as the ideas are there, We'll, we, the, we've put the bar, we feel like we've put the bar where we wanted it to be. It's about keeping it there, and as soon as it drops, we're letting go of it. We're not doing that thing, you know, Shameless became that, in a way. I hate to use that as an example. Once I left, you mean? Yeah, once Danny... Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Really, once Danny... Fancy <laughs> fucked up, did go downhill. But, but they flogged it for all it was worth, and it's just such a shame. If you look at series like Faulty Towers, there's nothing but good things said about it. They did one fucking series. Two. 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 Yeah. Did they? I've said that a lot, you yeah. know, dude. <laughs> You've got something to look forward to. Yeah. Do Does anyone watch Rick and Morty? Do the bit where Rick goes, you know, you don't want to take it for granted? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, what? I was like, do you mean, do you mean granted? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> it's just brilliant. I have those moments constantly. Another I think, so, sorry, America. I was just going to dive in. Uh, sorry for all the American guys, by the way. Are you American? Uh, no, no I'm, you're not. I'm Portuguese. Oh, Idiot. sorry. <laughs> uh, no, racist. Idiot. <laughs> you sounded a little bit American. I'm very sorry. I do sound a little bit American. American. Have you been um, there? No, just forget about it. I'm worsting, I'm worsting, so. Anyway, never mind that. Um, I, I think, yeah, we, we love the show, but I think it's just about we want it to, you know, we want to, we, we set ourselves a very sort of high bar and we want it to continue to be good and not, you know. So I think we, we, we would be disappointed in ourselves if we ever did a series that people were like, hmm, it's gone a bit, you know. So, yeah, we, 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 we want to carry on as long as we can, but as long as we can keep, keep making it good. Another question? So if you could just pass the mic along. Let's no. 
Of all the wonderful characters you've ever played, playing Vinny, is that harder because it's more like you? It's easy on the day in the sense that I don't really have to act. I can just, I never even question it. I, you know, like when you're playing a, a, a role that's where you step outside of yourself, you're questioning a lot of the things you're doing, you know. Uh, it's not me I'm playing. I'm playing someone brand new. I have to become this new thing. But of course, it's just fucking me. The, the bits that are difficult are the, are the bits that are true to, I mean, so mental health, um, my dad, my family, my friends even, you know, I've got, I feel a responsibility to the people in the town I grew up around, you know, so it's not all swings and fucking roundabouts, it's good fun, and, it, and uh, uh, it's the most personal thing I've ever done, yeah. like, without question it is, it's, it's really close to the fucking bone, yeah. So how much like you is it then? He's very much like me. He's got the same temper as me. I like things my way. If you don't go my way, I don't know. I'm a fucking nightmare, aren't I? Yes. No, you're not listening. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. You are not. <laughs> and you have to, you're I having a bipolar meltdown. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you, but I find Vinny has sort of better lines coming out of his mouth. Yes, he does. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Such a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that's a perfect place to leave it. Thank you so much for this Crushed panel. Crushed it. Thanks, guys.